So let us illustrate how the uh, register chip operates uh, using the hardware simulator. So to get started, I, I'm going to load one of my built-in register chips. And uh, in order to do it, I will select the NAND to Tetris uh, uh, folder. And uh, within it, I'm going to Tools. And within Tools, I'm going to Built-in Chips. And by the way, everything that I do, you can do also on your computer. You know, all these folders are available to you also. If, uh, of course, if you have downloaded the uh, NAND to Tetris uh, suite to your computer. So I'm selecting the built-in chips uh, directory and uh, opening it. And I see that I have all sorts of uh, built-in chips available to me. And um, all these chips are part of the hack uh, chipset. You know, these are chips that will come to play when we uh, piece together the computer architecture. And one of these chips is uh, called deregister. So let us load the deregister built-in chip into the simulator. And if I look at the HDL code, I see that uh, the HDL code is a little bit strange because it's a built-in chip. You don't have to worry about it because you don't have to build built-in chips in, in this course. You have to build them in plain HDL. But this code here says that uh, this chip is actually implemented by a Java class called uh, deregister which delivers uh, the functionality of, uh, of a 16-bit register. So um, it also says that uh, this chip is clocked because you know it's, it's a register chip, so it receives a clock input. And because the HDL includes the magical word uh, clocked, we see that a clock icon has uh, uh, opened up in the uh, uh, control panel of the um, of the simulator, and this clock is used to simulate the progression of time within the computer, or more accurately, it uh, simulates, it can be used to simulate a train of uh, uh, cycles. So each time I click this uh, clock icon, I move one phase in the cycle. So, you know, this was a tick, this is a talk, tick, talk, tick, talk, tick, talk. So I'm progressing the clock manually. And of course, I can also write a test script that includes a command like uh, while true TikTok, which will cause the clock to, uh, to tick and talk forever. Or I can say something like repeat uh, 10,000 uh, uh, TikToks uh, and so on. So, uh, but now we're going to do everything manually, and that's what you normally do when you build a chip and, and test it for the first time. So, uh, because this uh, chip is implemented by a Java class, we, we added to, the, uh, to these Java implementations all sorts of nice uh, features. Uh, for example, uh, the deregister has a GUI that, uh, uh, it's a GUI side effect that shows what is the current state or the current contents of this register. Happens to be zero because this is the default. So let's go ahead and uh, change uh, the, uh, uh, the contents of this register to something else. In particular, let's uh, change the register to uh, 17, my favorite number. So I'm changing uh, the in input, which is a 16-bit value into uh, 17, and I will run the clock forward, and I see that uh, actually nothing seems to happen. The uh, contents of the register remain zero, and so is uh, the output of the register. Well, nothing happens because I forgot to assert the load bit. So let's go to the load bit and turn it into one. And then we go back to the clock, we do a tick and we see that um, the contents of the register changed to 17, which is very nice, but the output of the register is still zero. And that's because you know it takes a complete cycle for the register to actually stabilize and begin to emit the new uh, state. So let's do a talk, and indeed I see that once I move to the next cycle, the output of the register is also 17, and from now on, uh, the register is in a stable state, 
and the state is 17, and it will remain 17 until a point of time in which uh, I will decide to change it into something else. Now, you know, one thing which I may want to do is set the, uh, uh, the load bit to zero, and this will serve as a safety so that uh, uh, if inadvertently, you know, someone changes uh, the value of this register, uh, nothing will happen until the load bit will be asserted. So, so let's go ahead and, and change the value of the register, which is presently 17, to uh, let's say 23, which is uh, another one of my favorite numbers. So 23, and uh, I assert the load bit to 1. Uh, I do a tick, and I see that now uh, the register is kind of an inconsistent state because the state of the register is 23, but the output is still 17. Once again, I have to complete the cycle in order to, uh, uh, to get to the, the register into a stable state. So I do a talk, and now the register is 23, but both uh, the state, the internal state of the register is 23, and also the, the register is, itself has committed to this new value, and it emits the value 23 as well. So now I continue cl to click the clock, and the value of, of the register became uh, 23. So, you know, this has been a demo of uh, the typical behavior of uh, the register, and uh, let's continue with the lecture.